pilot was rotating in today, but what have you seen out of him since being called up and kind of adjusting to your system? Yeah, he, I mean, he, like any guy that's called up or, or new player, it's going to take some time for him to adjust and acclimate, but he works through the process. He's a competitive guy, and um, he's, he's in the midst of that, doing very well. Don, we talked yesterday morning and we talked after the game just about learning how to put some of these defensive pairs together in the wake of the injuries. Uh, today's thought having Owen with Casey, and Casey's a guy we, we've seen grow consistently. What, what's your thought on just the way Casey can help him if that's what you go with tomorrow? Yeah, Casey is very familiar with how we want to play, um, which I think is a help, obviously, right shot, left shot. Um, you know, we had Owen and Dolls together for offensive reasons. They can possess a puck so well together, but I think, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to split them up tomorrow and uh, hope that we can get a little bit more balance through the through the six uh, by virtue of that. And I think uh, I think Fitzy's a good compliment. Uh, again, he's, he's a guy familiar with obviously myself for a long time and the way we want to play. He's Rasmus. What's, Rasmus Dowling was the first guy out there today and it looked like he was shooting from exactly where he was stopped in the last few seconds yesterday. What's that say to you about him? Uh, that exemplifies him. You know, he's he, he's never satisfied. Uh, certainly, when something doesn't go the way he wants it to go, he addresses it the right way. Um, and the right way would be to be on the ice early, trying to correct it. And uh, if it's not there, it's in film beforehand. He grab uh, one of us as coaches and want to go through something as well. And what do you have, Mike? Sorry. Well, it's kind of along those lines. We watched that play. You watched that play on tape, and you talked last night some of the struggles Power had in the game. That's a play where a guy who might have been struggling in the game just tries to fire the puck at the net really nilly. What does that say that he took a look and got you guys a quality chance right at the end? Yeah, that, that, you know, there's so many subtleties to Owen's game. He's a kid. He's young. Uh, he, you know, he, he's never played at this level or very few games now at this level. Uh, but to have the presence to know and feel and not, not, uh, uh, you know, so many guys feel the pressure and the heat of the moment. They lose sight of, you know, uh, plays that are around the ice and vision. And he didn't on that play. That was that was a spectacular but subtle, uh, just, you know, um, indication of how high his potential is, how high his talent is. What does he What does he need to do defensively? I mean, the first goal goes in. That just happens. The third goal, he knocks it out with his glove and gets it out of trouble. It just ends yeah. up knuckleballing in. I mean, what did you see from his defensive game last night? Just a little off, and it, what does he have to do? Yeah, he, he was off, but but so were about 12 other guys. Uh, and when, you know, if you if you say 12 other guys and nine of them are the guys in front of you, you're picking up way more baggage that they left behind. And, it, you know, we went through this with Deline. Uh, you know, he he's always engaged. You know, as a defenseman, you can back off and play really conservative, and nobody notices any errors out of you. Uh, and the puck goes in your net. And, Nobody can point a finger at you, but when you're aggressive and you play, uh, you know, assertive, uh, and layers in front of you fall apart, uh, you can look bad. And and unfortunately, that's that's what happens. But I give, uh, you know, um, I give all our defensemen a lot of credit for for that uh, because in, and then it falls on the goalie. Mm -hmm. You know, you turn to him and say, well, was, he should have made that save. Well, it should have been stopped a couple of plays before that. Our our last two goals against were layers of the forwards that just didn't do what they needed to do. And uh, that was uh, upsetting. We talked about it as a, as a team this morning. Uh, and, you know, again, it, it does, the, you always look at the defenseman or the goalie last because they were the final thing. But I can tell you mistakes were made well before that on, on the last two goals against. He's only at a point in his career, much like Rasmus experienced a couple of years ago, just expectations are, maybe too high from the outside and people forget that he's 19. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't worry about expectations uh, other than internal right. expectations. It's hard, you know, um, and that's no disrespect to anybody else having, you know, their viewpoints, opinions, whatever. But, you know, for Owen, he's got to stay within himself. We as a team have to stay within ourselves uh, and get, you know, target what needs to be worked on next. Um, I, I think, um, you know, he, he, Owen's an incredibly talented hockey player and very effective for us. Um, you know, we're, we're we have we have some injuries back there. We're asking guys to do more, and uh, you know, at least initially, till we can get some call-up guys or new guys that weren't in the lineup because of injuries in sync. I think 
uh, there's going to be some hiccups. And um, I don't think it's necessarily the specific guy that it looks like in each one because this is a team game. Um, but for, for Owen, I, I don't really worry about expectations. I mean, uh, Dolls has gone through it. I think Dolls is real supportive. I think the players around him are real supportive, and I think he embraces it. You know, he's he has a demand to be better. He's not satisfied. So he's, you don't have a guy here that's, that's living the life like I'm a, I'm a number one pick and I'm, I'm something special. Owen works. He, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't present, you know, he doesn't think and process that way. He tries to find ways to get better. Uh, he tries to find ways of what, am, what are my responsibilities? What am I missing the responsibilities? So he is so engaged in becoming a better hockey player and doing things for the right reason that, uh, you know, you, you, you respect the person, uh, not only a player, respect the person for that. Tate uh, certainly got his shots against Montreal. He had 12 shot attempts, eight on goal. So he's getting the, the chances to shoot it and do it. What does he have to do to get just get one to go in for him? Well, it's going to go in for him. I mean, because of what you said, he's doing the right things, and you just have to keep doing the right things. And, and you know, when it when it breaks, you you feel so, it's a, like a breath of fresh air. We all know it. You feel so much better, and and you're in sync. You're not overthinking things. But you know, any guy that's that's a goal scorer, accomplished players, which all these guys have, have done through their career, you start squeezing and pressing. And, and uh, you know, even my conversation today with the whole team is is what we just went through last night, what we went through in Seattle. Those are natural occurring processes that you cannot replicate in a preseason. You can't replicate it in the off season. So we have to embrace it. Hey, we, we didn't do as well as we wanted to do last night. But if, if we react and overreact and react negatively, we're just going to compound it. We're going to compound pressure, anxiety, tension, and more fatigue and more worry and more concern. So, you know, what we went through last night, what Tej is going through is is healthy and, and it's essential to go through that. Unfortunately, you, like I said, you can't replicate that. So you got to be able to uh, come to the rink today and plow ahead and not carry any anxiety and any fear and drive forward. And for Tej, I think he's he's working through that process as other guys are uh, because they just want it so bad, so fast, and that can complicate the issue. Don, you had a look on the inside of Patrick Kane. Everyone knows a lot about him watching the Hawks, watching him. What did you learn being in the room with him for that time about him? You know, one really special, with all, with all talented, talent, elite players, every every moment matters. I mean, it matters to him. And I think of Darlene, and I think of just elite athletes, Crosby, and uh, every you know player that I coach. It, everything matters. The, the, the 42nd game of the year on the road when you don't feel good and you're down, it matters. Uh, they want the puck. They want to make a play. They're ready to make a play at any moment, any time, which makes him dangerous. And uh, you, know, you combine that with talent, if we're talking about Patrick Kane, that he has uh, always dangerous. Is that what you're talking about? Why? I remember when he wanted to go to the World Championships, he wanted to be their captain for Team USA. Now, of course, with Chicago, he's not going to be the captain. Jonathan Tabes is the captain. Is just this trait you're talking about the reason you think he wanted to go do that? Yeah, I mean, I, I had the good fortune of spending two years with him with Chicago, but also on the Men's World Championship team, and he was spectacular in all situations. Uh, he was our captain at Men's World Championships, and he was uh, he was a natural in that. He's a natural leader. And, and again, you talk about captains, and, and Taze is a great captain and has been a great captain for a long time, but leadership. And, and you know, uh, not only is Taze a great leader, so is Patrick Kane. And, and players, you see that, how players just migrate toward him, mm -hmm. you know, before practice, after practice, in the locker room, in the players' lounge. Uh, and he says the right things and leads by example. So uh, it's always a pleasure to, to, to be around people and players like that. What do you do to help younger guys stop getting discouraged? What do you do to prevent them from getting discouraged? The same thing you do with older guys because they all get discouraged. I guess we just talked about Thompson and even Skinner and Tuck at times. They, they all do. Um, you know, you, you you reassure them and you push them at the same time. You know, you don't want to. You certainly don't want to be the shoulder to cry on. Um, but you you have to reassure them with confidence and and push and uh, a little bit short of grinding them, but push them. And uh, I think there's a little balance that's needed there when when guys are fighting it. You had a bit of a new look on the power play personnel wise. What have you just thought about the power play through seven games here? Uh, I mean, I haven't liked it, um, but but that's, you know, that again, I, I think we have to go through a process. We don't have 
guys that have been on a power play for five years, look around the league, the, the top power plays, there, there's guys that have been on it for five, six, seven, eight, nine years. And, you know, at that point, you can just kind of hit the, the, the reset button. Um, our guys, you know, are much younger, much less experience on it. So, unfortunately, I think this is what they're going through is, is natural. You just have to fight off frustration, um, doubt, uh, worry, concern, because, you know, then you see behaviors that follow that. You know, maybe overpassing the puck, maybe hanging on to the puck a little bit too long. You know, just as two quick visual examples. But uh, you know, we fought it a little bit, fought the psychology of it, and um, I, I just see it as a natural process. I, the, the group we have was very successful late in the year. It will be successful. Uh, unfortunately, we're going through a bit of a process, and um, we'll we'll continue to pay attention to it as a coaching staff and and push and. I know it'll resolve and we'll be much, much better uh, as a result of it, of going through that. When you talked about, you know, the continuity, some of the best units in the league have, and you're, earlier you were talking about, like, not overreacting, is that part of it, trying to, you know, realize that these guys need time together and you don't want to take seven games and say, yeah. all right, we need to do something totally different or put a different guy in there or something Yeah, like I that. mean, we did, as you mentioned, we did tweak. We moved two two players around. We switched Middlestead and, and uh, then we added Quinn. Uh, so those are two pretty big switches, uh, you know, one jumping on a different unit each. So, but yeah, I, I think like anything else, there's an awful lot we can react to. I mean, we can react to, to 50 things that happened in that game and blow things up every day. But what culture does that create? What mindset does that create? Uh, and, you know, is that a confident way when you're just wishy-washy, change, you're changing things every day? You, you got to ask yourself: how, Are you wishy-washy about you know this? So, you know, we it is you're playing against eighty million dollar payrolls or, or close to it, elite athletes. That you know, I mean, we go to work every day. These the players do, and you know, they get punched in the face, they get separated shoulder, they can get you know, I don't know how many people go to work and have a competitor in their office knocking them around every minute, and. And that's professional sports. And, you know, so you, you, yeah, there's a lot of things that you want to progress at. We need to progress. That's our focus is progression, not blowing things up every day. So uh, it's, it's hard, it's challenging because you do, we see, you know, we see lots of areas that you can react to. Uh, but again, we don't want to react to everything because uh, it just doesn't send the right message. Thank you.